Hello, Aida. Hello. Thank you so much for being here with us. Uh, thank you for taking out the time. It's lovely to have you here. Thank you for having me. This will be really, really fun. Yeah, I can already feel that. Tell us a, a bit about yourself, Aida, your education, your background. Who are you? Oh, wow. That's a <laughs> question I've been asking myself my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> That's a tough one. I am a person that can't have one title. So uh, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm doing a lot of stuff. I was born in Bosnia, uh, but I grew up in Sweden. And uh, I did the regular, uh, the regular journey, you know, go to school. What do you want to be when you grow up? I still don't know. <laughs> um, so I just shifted the whole thing to do what I think is fun and uh, that can help someone else. So uh, that's where I'm at right now. Uh, I do, uh, my baseline is communication. I work with people. I work with, um, you can say that whatever I'm working at, uh, it has something to do with uh, building, building people and building um, self-confidence. Because I believe that if everyone has great self-esteem, then everyone will create what they are good at and that will in turn help someone else so i believe in um, i believe in mind strength and in strong people that's very interesting that's extremely interesting and being My an tiny, educationist, tiny vision <laughs> <laughs> it's a huge vision I, I i suppose that's one of the most important things that are at the base of everything that we do is what, how we feel about things and what passion we carry uh, being an educationist myself, I can't help myself asking this question. I ask all our guests, what part do you think your schooling played in, in uh, shaping this, this, this wonderful entrepreneur that you are today? How was school a part of that? Uh, okay. I want to say stay in school. <laughs> so do that. <laughs> if someone is listening, stay in school. Uh, but actually, school didn't help me at all in my journey to, I, if anything, it slowed me down. Mm -hmm. um, I, want to, I want schools to have, um, to have personal development programs. And there are so many things that I learned during my, um, during my career and my search for a, a, um, for a job or a, a career path that I really loved. So I, that kind of set me back a few years because in school you, you were taught that these are the things you can, you can do and these are the different jobs you can choose from. But nobody told me that you can create something entirely new. Mm -hmm. So I do believe, of course, that school is important for, for general knowledge, but school did nothing for me um, in this in my career path. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so all the leadership uh, skills that you have today, the communication skills that you have today, what would you say where you got them from along your journey? At what point did you think that you picked up all of that as part of your personality? That's... Uh, that's only one thing that is being out there talking to people, getting to know mm. lots and lots of people, listen to their journeys, uh, what they've been, what they've been through and uh, mm. how they find different paths in life. So I, uh, working with people, just being there, working with people and meeting, talking to a lot of people that I think that is the most important thing. Yeah, I completely agree. And living in Sweden, that's something that you have to put a little extra emphasis on because that doesn't happen very naturally um, to, to build those kind of soft skills. So you would say that networking is something that has really helped you uh, Absolutely. shape up. Both in finding my, my own, um, finding my own personality in terms of leadership, finding out how I interact with people, how other react and interact with yeah. me and uh, that's that is uh, i love i love school a lot i love learning new mm -hmm. things but you just need to be out in the real world <laughs> yeah i i completely agree it's uh, totally agree with that uh what are you doing today 
what are the things your your business is what are the different things that you're doing today today i am doing in-house coaching for santa we've stepped it up a little bit this year and we are developing a leadership program just like mm -hmm. what we're talking about now um i believe that you i believe that everyone is a leader at some point then we have leaders that can uh, that can lead other people but you need to be a leader for yourself and that's how we want to run things at Santa. we want every employee to be uh, his or her own leader and uh, this uh, this has something this is something that we've been working on um, for the past year mm -hmm. uh, both in terms of corona but also this is something we've been wanting people to do that learn how to lead themselves and uh, also this is this is very important in um, for self esteem and everything we want mm -hmm. to uh, at santa we don't have a it, it's not a hierarchy like you like in big mm -hmm. organizations we are um we are all leaders and we want everyone to feel confident that they can make their own decisions and uh, and develop themselves in their in their work so in-house coaching is something that we've been uh, working on this year. So I'm coaching our employees and mm -hmm. also other leaders. And that has been a big success, actually. So now we are developing a leadership program that mm -hmm. is based, yeah, based in, in self-esteem and how to, how to set your own goals and, uh, yeah. Wow. wow, that that sounds absolutely interesting. This is actually something that they should be teaching at schools. Um, I know. <laughs> yeah. I know. Yeah. It's super fun. It's super. I'm very um, now. I'm um, technically still on vacation, so I'm really looking forward yeah. to when we when we just start again and uh, now this fall and uh, really kickstart this. It will be amazing. I'm sure it would be. How did the idea come? When, at what point did you think that, all right, this is something I need to do? The idea for Santa. Um, we, uh, we want to, uh, when we hire people at Santa, we of course want people who know their stuff and know everything. They have the right competence and you know everything. Yeah. Um, but mostly we want the right personalities. We want mm -hmm. we want a person that fits uh, in the group because with when a group works together well, then everyone feel safe and they feel like they can develop themselves. Yeah. And uh, so we had this we had this big plan of uh, events and workshops, and we were we would be doing lots of events, and then Corona hit and destroyed all our plans. Uh, yeah. So we were we will we were all in our own houses thinking about how can we how can we do this we can't even see each other so how do we do yeah. this yeah. and then we had um, you know since everyone is isolated at home this brings up stuff in people so this this brings mm. up um, insecurities about the future and some people get depression and it's yeah. it's tough being isolated of course Absolutely. and um, so when uh, when I um, started, um, when I started getting back a bit into work because I have been on parental leave, mm -hmm. then I was um, I was seeing this energy in the office, and I uh, and I, I was thinking to myself, you know what everyone needs? Everyone needs coaching. <laughs> yeah. And since I am a, since I am a coach, but I haven't. Uh, I haven't been coaching at Santa or employees in that way, so mm -hmm. I just developed this whole new, this whole new thing, this whole new idea, and mm -hmm. um, so we tried it out. We we said to our employees, "But who wants to who wants to try coaching?" And they were like, "Oh, is that like therapy?" Because no, I don't need a therapist. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I was all like, "No, it's nothing like ter therapy. I won't ask you about your childhood or your father or your mother." Uh, mm -hmm. This is simply, simply just to talk about your future, your future goals, and what you want to do. And uh, you don't always know what you want to do. Yeah. Uh, we think we do, but we really don't when we when we are forced to to say it, to verbally say it. 
And so we tried it out and everyone that tried wanted more. And uh, then they started their own projects in the office, outside the office, and then they mm -hmm. wanted to follow up and how can I do this? How can I do that? Wow. <laughs> and so wow. they started, it started like that. And uh, awesome. now we, now we, now we do it. it we will, we will continue doing this. Brilliant. So did you see that there was a need for this kind of thing in uh, the ecosystem that you are currently working in? Did you feel that a lot of people needed this kind of thing? Yes, I yes I do because we want people to feel feel safe in making yeah. their own decisions in their work. Mm. And we've been seeing that uh, let's say for example project managers they um, they don't always feel safe in taking the bigger decisions and we are like mm -hmm. yes do it even if it's even if it turns out it's a big mistake never mind just just do it be be the leader that you that you need and uh, so we are taking we are taking risks but not all people are risk mm -hmm. takers of course and they want someone to tell them what to do yeah and uh, we we want we want people to feel safe enough to make the mistakes we yeah. want mistakes to be made <laughs> yeah brilliant that's so, so that's uh, i saw i saw there was a need for that and uh, so um I believe this will make an immensely huge difference when we when we review this at the end of the year. Yeah, and you've said it so beautifully that we're we're conditioned to not make mistakes, and that way we don't take any risks. So, yeah, brilliant work that you're doing. So, what kind of uh, customers do you have? Uh, what kind of people come to you for coaching? Um, from the beginning, it was all sorts of people. I wanted, I wasn't. Uh, entirely sure myself in uh, in what kind of people I want to coach because you can coach anything or or yeah. anyone. So, but it turned it it kind of made itself into uh, into this uh, career achievements goals, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, then I then I got a lot of a lot of clients and I I said to myself that this is this is really what I wanted to do. I want people to experience themselves in a new way i want people mm -hmm. to explore their strengths um, you can't even imagine people have no idea what they're capable of they have no idea <laughs> they go home so and they turn off they, they turn on netflix and all their potential goes out the window Down the drain yes yes it so i see agree. i meet amazing people and they show me their talents and i'm like why aren't you doing anything with this <laughs> Do something. Yeah. I, I know the feeling. It's it's almost the same feeling that you have in a classroom when you go in as an educator and you see that there's so much potential, but people just don't know how to use it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And I want them to see it so that they can believe that, wow, this is really my thing. I can do something with this. Hmm. So we need to uh, get rid of the fear barrier. Yeah. So is it like a one-time thing that you offer or how do you make your customers come back to you once they've crossed the barriers? Um, how, how do you keep your business? Um, this is not good for my business to say, but they don't mm -hmm. have, they don't need me more than once or twice, actually, <laughs> depending mm -hmm. on the problem or the issue. And I tell them that uh, first session free, uh, because I we want to we want to see if we can work with each other. If you trust me, if you don't trust me, we can't work together, and you will not trust yourself in the in the session. Mm -hmm. um, most people, most of my clients want a five five session package, mm -hmm. and then we set mm -hmm. out a plan for for those uh, five sessions. And uh, as they as they progress as they develop their skills and everything of course they their goals also get higher so they come back to me <laughs> yeah yeah so oh, bigger wow. goals new visions or yeah. you know you don't get rid of the problems when you solve one problem you get a Something new problem else. yes so yeah. Yeah. it's just a matter of what kind of problems you want mm. so they come back with their new bigger problems <laughs> yeah. more inspiring but, problems i want to say yeah and then it keeps on that's that's how life works yeah wow brilliant um so 
in your line of work, you meet a lot of people and when you're talking to them, of course, there's a lot of exchange of energies. How do you make sure that you don't carry all that energy with you at home? There are all sorts of uh, uh, strong, heavy energies. And when you go home, it's it's more, the question is more about work-life balance. How do you make sure that you don't carry everything on your mind when you're going back home? Well, I made the mistake of uh, carrying everything around me and uh, carrying it with me, taking it home. So I actually stopped coaching for two or three years. I didn't coach anyone. I just backed off <laughs> and uh, did something else. So mm -hmm. that's something I wanted to I wanted to work with myself first. So I went when I saw that this coaching thing is really, really fantastic. And I, I work with neuro-linguistic programming. Mm -hmm. um, it's a way of programming our minds and feelings. Yeah. So it works for us and not against us. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I saw what it could do, I just threw myself in there. And I wasn't sure about what, what clients I wanted to work with. And I wasn't sure about how I wanted to work. So I was overwhelmed. Uh, and then... I just stopped because it was it was too much uh, yeah. and that's when i really had to sit down and think about what kind of problems i want to work with what what yeah. i wanted to do and uh, when i when i solved that the work-life problems wasn't uh, the the balance wasn't even hard to mm -hmm. find because then i knew what i wanted <laughs> Yeah. And I knew what kind of people I wanted around me, what kind of people I wanted to work with. And uh, so whenever whenever I've uh, had clients, I go home and I do one hour of heavy training and then uh, I'm set. Everything's, everything's Brilliant. fine. <laughs> Brilliant. So yeah. training is your thing. So you, that's, training that's is how my you thing. couple off. Okay, perfect. Yes. Perfect. So when you meet your clients, when you meet people... Um, what do you see as the biggest common problem that people have when they come to you? Self-esteem. Mm -hmm. Everyone is concerned about what, what other people think. Everyone is concerned about how mm -hmm. anyone else will, if anyone else will believe them or trust them or, or think they are good enough. So mm -hmm. that's a hundred percent, all my clients, uh, we do we we do work with this in some way. Wow, that sounds so interesting. That 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 must open up a whole new world for for people with low self esteem to come and talk about things. And then, um, does does that help them build their business when they go back to their businesses, uh, having a higher self esteem and having the having worked with you? Do you think that helps them? Absolutely, because when you when you work on your self-esteem and you know yourself better then you are you are not so terrified of making mistakes you yeah. you can make decisions and you don't have to second guess yourself you don't have to think about what 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 your clients will think what the customers will think what everyone the customer isn't always right and that's yeah. what they come back with they are not always right they can be hold <laughs> yes so yeah. when when my clients go get back they are so much stronger in their leadership in leading themselves mm. in their daily life but also in their businesses yeah brilliant brilliant uh, what mistakes did you make in your journey what is it that you really learned from and you'd like to share with our audience here that don't do this <laughs> okay uh First, first, of course, I wasn't uh, I wasn't too sure about my decisions. I always wanted someone else's opinion first, so that someone else could verify that what I believe is right. Mm. Uh, that that's a self esteem issue. That's uh, how it all started for me. Um, I want to say don't take your work home, but. <laughs> My home is my work and my work is my home. Yeah. So I also learned that that is not the problem. The problem is not knowing what you want, what you really what you really want and why. Uh, when 
I got lost and when I stopped coaching and when I really crashed, that's that's when I found out that I am not really sure why I'm doing this. Mm. I'm not sure why I left a high paying job to do my own stuff, to do my own things. I, I didn't know why. So that wasn't clear to me. I just knew I wanted, but that's not good enough for us to know that we want something. Sometimes sometimes the biggest curse is getting what you think you want. And uh, so know what you want and why and skip all the rest. The rest is just fluffy stuff. <laughs> Yeah, wow, that's you, you put everything so beautifully and it sounds everything sounds so simple, it just feels like you know the, the oh the, yeah, the uh, it gone. sounds simple, yes. It's yeah, it's, but it's not yeah. uh, easier said than done though. Yeah. Of course, you have to give yourself time. <clears throat> We are very impatient creatures. Yeah, that's that's true, completely agree. Um Let's just move on a little bit to your uh, dancing career as well. You're a dance trainer. And um, yeah, would you like to tell us a bit about that? Yeah, I just fell into uh, dancing in a weird way. Uh, I was okay. a yoga teacher. I'm a yoga teacher. So mm -hmm. I went awesome. to, uh, I did two yoga teacher trainings. Mm -hmm. And uh, then one day I was Facebooking, scrolling, uh, wasting my life, you know, like you do. <laughs> when you're tired and don't know what to do yeah. so and i had this facebook friend she was doing pole dance and she was climbing and doing all these tricks and and it it looked amazing and i was thinking to myself why am i doing regular things on the floor when she can do these magical things on yeah, yeah such power and i'm always uh, because i love training i love strength training i want to do things that require power Mm -hmm. So uh, I wanted to learn that, and the same day, uh, the same day I was, I decided that I want to buy a pole and see what happens. Mm -hmm. So I bought it. It it arrived three day uh, three days later, and I set it up one, one pole in my yoga studio. Mm -hmm. And that day I started. <laughs> I tried it out. Of course, it was horribly hard. It was it was so so tough, and I couldn't mm -hmm. do anything. And that really intrigued me because that it made me mad because I thought I was stronger than I was. Mm -hmm. And also it intrigued me because there is someone doing it, so I must be able to do it. Yeah. So it, we have, we have uh, the same functional body, so I must be, I must be able to do this. Mm. And when I, I, that day I was in, in my yoga studio for six hours straight just wow. falling and uh, hurting myself <laughs> <laughs> uh, but then uh, that same day i decided that this is something more people need to try it, because i noticed right away that it wasn't only about the body about the strength it was so much in my head when my yeah. when i tried all these things i realized i i heard all my limiting beliefs so loud mm. they were so loud and i could i could hear them and mm. and i realized that this voice is talking to me like this every day and i don't hear it i i don't hear it because i i'm on the phone i, I do stuff mm. i'm on facebook i listen mm. to music so i don't actually hear what's going on in the background and mm. then there i was it was it was this silent day in the studio and i was doing this things and it brought out the these thoughts and i could hear them so loudly so that's when two of my worlds just clashed mm -hmm. and and i realized so many things i learned a lot about myself and uh, and then i thought to myself uh, no this will not be me i will not have this in my head and mm -hmm. uh, so some, somewhere Uh, that day, I decided that this is something more people need to try to mm -hmm. really, really challenge themselves mm -hmm. and bring out all those those fears and insecurities. And fear of falling from the pole or doing a yoga trick, it's not about the actual fear of falling on the floor. There's something else inside us. Yeah. So uh, that day, 
uh, I don't even I don't even know how I did this now when I think back. Um, but I put on my website that I will be doing courses for four months mm -hmm. later mm -hmm. after my vacation. And I couldn't do anything, anything. So I gave myself the challenge that I would teach myself in four months to be uh, to be able to teach someone else pole. Mm. Wow. And and I um, that was very scary, very very scary. But I was I was determined to uh, to teach. Mm. And so I gave myself four months, trained five hours a day, got inflammation in my muscles, and then mm -hmm. I took a vacation for three weeks. And then I came back and realized what I had done. And people were it was they were, it was fully booked, and then wow. I started to panic a little bit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but then yeah. I, gave, I gave myself no way out, no plan B, no no bridges, mm -hmm. no exit doors, and then there I was, and people were staring at me. Uh, we were there, uh, and they were like, "Okay, what do we do now?" And I was like, "Yeah, what do we do now?" <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So razor sharp focus is something that brought you this the discipline that you had on your physical body uh is is something that helped you succeed uh in not not just your uh, dancing career but also in your uh, other businesses absolutely 100 percent. and uh, so now i teach pole i teach hip-hop dance don't even ask mm -hmm. me about that but here we are, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and, uh, awesome. training, uh, functional body training and everything. Yeah. So that's, you might think it, there are two different things, but all of mm -hmm. this is one yeah. simple thing. It's what's in here. Yeah, that's so true. Do you think being a woman or a foreign entrepreneur has been your strength or has it been a hurdle? How has your journey been being a woman and a foreign entrepreneur here in Sweden? Uh, for all women um it's i believe it's tougher than than mm -hmm. we think i i am a i'm kind of a i'm a very tough person i don't i i've always had i always had more male friends than than girlfriends mm -hmm. but still i feel that something is different between men and women in regards to that and also in a business like it you know yeah um but i I lost that limit when I turned 30 years old because before it's it, something shifted before uh, after that because uh, before that I was a woman I was a foreigner and I was young so mm -hmm. basically in in the eyes of some older men I knew absolutely nothing <laughs> yeah and and the, anything I say is just mm -hmm. girls talk you know yeah uh. <laughs> after 30 Mm -hmm. I uh, I had in my mind like I gave everything a finger. <laughs> I mm -hmm. gave everything the finger, and I was like, no, I I really do know my stuff. I've been mm -hmm. I've been questioning myself for so many years, and I won't do that mm -hmm. anymore. Mm -hmm. So, what advice would you either give to other female entrepreneurs or other uh, people trying to make it like you did? What advice would you give them? It's actually really simple. When someone is crit critiquing you or think they are critiquing you, mm -hmm. look at how they live their lives and what kind of decisions they make in their businesses, in their work and everything. When I started to uh, look at people like that, I realized that those who were, um, who didn't take me seriously or um, were critiquing me or um, just giving me a hard time, I would see a real distinct pattern, and it was that they are the they are the people who always whine at something. It's mm -hmm. always someone else's fault. The boss is stupid. My wife is stupid. This one is stupid. Everyone's stupid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that um, no one can give you advice or critique in something they don't they know nothing about, and they are always always those kind of people that um, they haven't achieved what they wanted in life. Mm -hmm. So it's much easier to look Precise. at someone else. Yeah. yeah. So always listening to your own inner voice is something that gives you the strength. Yeah, just feel sorry for them. Don't don't <laughs> don't take them seriously. <laughs> don't let them get under your skin. Yeah. 
Perfect, but that's that's really good advice. Uh, either we have a lot of questions here. Let's just pause uh, for a moment and let's take some of the questions here. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so Anna would like to know what is Zenta's core line of business? Is it consulting or is it business development? Uh, we are a digitalization agency. So we do, um, we started out doing websites, but we still do some websites, but we are digitalizing businesses. Uh, if that answers your question, mm -hmm. we, um, we don't, we, we don't uh, hire, we, we don't have uh, consultants like we hire them or uh, things like that, but we do, uh, we do dig digitalization projects. So say that, if a business wants to be more digitalized uh, in some way, maybe they have maybe they have books and papers everywhere. We help them to archive it in in a digitalized form. And um, also, we do uh, we do prototypes. We are working with uh, if uh, you have heard of uh, Ceft, um, China. Um, oh, oh my God, they have such a long name. Mm -hmm. the automotive uh, business. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they wanted to digitalize a car. And okay. uh, we made a prototype of a car door that could, uh, that could project, say, a Skype call or something on the window. So we made the window uh, so we could, it could turn opaque and, or, or transparent and mm -hmm. uh, put sound into the glass itself and everything mm -hmm. so uh that's the stuff we really re really really love to do beautiful that's awesome all, all sorts of innovation that's that's coming out but um i can't help noticing that you work with digitalizing and then you work with mindfulness which are both like kind of opposites of each other it's so beautiful how you've kept just the right balance between um mindfulness and the other uh the other extreme which is screen time or digitalizing. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah I see it like this. Um, we can digitalize anything. We can, uh, we can make everything technical, but behind all of that is people. Behind all of that are people anyway. So we do mm -hmm. digitalize because we want to help people uh, save time and uh, make use of their time better so they can do something they really want and have a passion for. So um, behind all of this, uh, all of these technical stuff are people. Yeah. Mm. They are brains and they are humans. Very well said. So let's move on to the next question. Farhan Sabir would like to know, can anyone be a leader? No, sorry. Uh, can everyone be a leader? Mm? Um, yes and no. Anyone can okay. lead themselves. Uh, that's also that's a kind of leader we often forget, uh, because it takes some kind of a leader to lead yourself too. But no, not everyone can lead a group, and uh, not everyone want to, and that's the main reason, of course, uh, that not everyone can. Um, we have very introverted people. They yeah. they don't feel good about uh, groups and it's not always about self-esteem in that way. They're just introverted mm -hmm. and uh, um, it's a personality trait. So no, not everyone can lead a group, but everyone can lead themselves. So in that regard, yes. Okay. Anyone can be a leader and perhaps more important than leading a group is to lead yourself more than anything else. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. It takes a leader to lead your life, to lead your project, your, your family life relationships. So that's, kind of a leadership too. Absolutely. Um, there's another question that could this be due to social media, the self-esteem problem, comparing with each other and all the things that people put up on social media, it just forces everyone to uh, kind of place themselves in a, in, in a kind of a hierarchy. Do you think this is what's affecting our self-esteem? Oh yes, absolutely. That That's absolutely one, um, one of the things. Um, it's we are exposed to so many people's lives now than we are naturally. Mm. Uh, back in the days, you could just compare yourself to your neighbors or your friends yeah. and the neighbor gets a new car, then you look at your old crappy car and need a new car. And you know, 
but that yeah. was a very small amount of people. But now you, you, you scroll and you scroll and you see hundreds of people's lives every day. Yeah. And um, there you are sitting with, uh, with the chips in your soggy, dirty pants in the couch. Mm -hmm. And you think that everyone is on Ibiza and drinking yeah. <laughs> tequila. So, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> Social media is a problem like that because we see everyone's polished uh, life yeah. and most of the ac accounts are not even real. They are not even, they're catfish. I don't know if you're, um, if you know that term catfish, yeah. someone who yeah. poses to be someone else. Yeah. So, yeah. and then there's Photoshop and then there's uh, filters and everything. So, so much. Yeah. Nobody wants to, uh, nobody wants to show you when they are miserable, of course. Yeah. And everyone is at some point. Absolutely, yes. social media is a big problem like that. Absolutely. Um, just connected to this question would be, um, my question would be that, do you see a solution to that in your line of work? Do you think that uh, you can, how, how can you help people uh, not getting affected by social media because you're working both with digitalizing, you're working with mindfulness. Uh, do you feel that there can be some sort of innovation here? I actually heard of, um, just the other day, I heard of uh, someone wanted to, I don't know if it was, uh, uh, what, what if it was an organization or a person, mm -hmm. but someone wanted to make influencers uh, reveal their real pictures mm. without filters without uh, without injections and botox they whenever an influencer makes money on something uh, they wanted to make them show show the real picture as mm. well and that is a real good innovation in if we're talking innovation Absolutely. that is something yeah. fantastic because Absolutely. i could say that yeah of course everyone everyone should work on their self-esteem and every adult can go to a coach or a therapist or talk to yeah. someone and work on themselves of course but then we have these very very young people we have very young girls we have very young boys and they don't get this in school yeah. they don't get uh, they don't get this in school they can't they don't know how to uh, work on themselves from the start mm -hmm. and they have TikTok from whatever 11 or 13 years even younger yeah even younger mm -hmm. yes so we are starting off very young people with mm -hmm. no tools to handle themselves and then we put them on you create good consumers that's that's what yeah. we do and yeah. then you have to fix problems when you're adult <laughs> yes yeah that's that's so true and fixing problems at that age is super tough yep <laughs> Um, so we move on to the next question. Um, Linda would like to know, do entrepreneurs first need to work on their why? How should they do this? How to work on your why? Why do you want to do something? Yes, absolutely. This is um, whatever, um, either it's uh, in entrepreneurship or business or your own personal life whenever we take on a bigger project we should always start with why mm. uh, that's more important than who and what actually because if i know why then the what uh, won't be so tough when we when we hit that plateau mm. in the beginning everything is fun and motivating and inspir inspirational but that will that will wean off and it will tear you apart if you don't know why you are doing yeah. things yeah, and you're a living example of the fact that once you know your why, then there's no stopping. Exactly. Then every problem is much, much smaller. Yes. Um, Svenja says that I feel like knowing what you want is the hardest part most of the times, though. Any suggestions on how to pursue that path? How do you know what you want? For me, it feels like I want everything. <laughs> Yeah, I uh, yes, I'm the same. I also want uh, I also want everything. Yeah, uh, there are many tools for this. One of them mm -hmm. is going backwards. Uh, mm -hmm. If you do, um, this is one of one of the exercises I do with my clients uh, yeah. when uh, working with these questions. It's 
go backwards. Uh, set yourself at an age where you think it's too late to do anything. Set yourself, mm. uh, th think 20, say, say 20 years from now and go yeah. backwards. What has happened for you to be a happy whatever year old person and mm -hmm. you feel like you're ful fulfilled, your life has gone exactly the way you want to and then go backwards year by year by year what has happened mm -hmm. and then there are classical like more more classic uh, tools like um what makes you happy what mm -hmm. what what makes you know when you when you're doing something and time seems to just disappear and then three hours went by what mm -hmm. have you been doing during that time mm -hmm. and no mm -hmm. netflix doesn't count no, it doesn't count, okay. Um, so, um, is it good to have a plan B? Or We talked a lot about burning bridges and, you know, just diving right in. But as an entrepreneur, it's also wise to sometimes have a plan B. What is your take on this? I am... Um, I believe that when you are full-on stressed and uh, when you're on fire you do your best work. So mm. I am a big believer of no plan B. Mm. And so I have, I have a method for this. Uh, I have a plan B and a plan C. Mm -hmm. no, uh, no, a plan A and a plan C, I'm sorry. Uh, no plan B because plan B usually is something that is good enough for you. And when you have mm. something to fall back on that is good enough, then you won't set yourself out for for that what you really really want mm. when you have a plan b good enough is good enough you know people will often uh, people will often do something that makes them less happy uh, because it's something they know and are comfortable yeah. with instead of doing something harder that will make them very very happy mm. yeah just because there there's unknown territory there yeah so have a plan a and a plan c plan c is something that is you know when you when you need to use plan c you have failed because that's not yeah. something you want mm. Mm. True, no true. comfortable so, plan b just uh, yeah. lose the cushion <laughs> yes so don't settle for less just, just nope, go no, for no. it yeah perfect um Startup Hub wants to know, how do you see artificial intelligence? It's, it's, it's the thing now. Do you Ooh. think it will lead to uh, long-term loneliness and people become more machine dependent? Will human relationships suffer? What do you think about IA? I think we, all, we are already there. We are already where we, people feel lonely, very, very lonely. And yeah. uh, especially, well, if we don't count these two, two, two last years, it, mm -hmm. It's been like this for years and years when uh, you feel like you have friends when you're online, but as soon as that screen mm -hmm. is turned off, you realize that How you lonely. are very, very lonely. Um, if you also see statistics, statistics of how many times you wake up your phone during a day, mm -hmm. uh, that some people can't handle five minutes of silence mm -hmm. and uh, if when I say to someone that they should meditate, they go in panic mode right away. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, we are already we are already there, and I absolutely believe that this will. It's not a good. Uh, we are not developing in in uh, that in the way we should. Yeah. Uh, so machines absolutely and AI will take over where there should be more human interaction instead but i do have some hope because i believe that we will we will stop this in the right way in in the right time mm -hmm. and i guess covid has kind of prepared us a little bit for that kind of a scenario as well where people yeah. can get burned mm -hmm. not everything is doomy and gloomy <laughs> <laughs> i think many yeah. of us realize that being outside in the nature just because we someone told us we can't so that's of course what we want mm. and uh, you, we will move more towards that yeah so true um before we move on to any other questions either let's just talk a little bit about becco and the, the, the startup ecosystem over there how would you describe the uh, startup atmosphere in becco how do you see it as a do you see it as a tech city 
uh, a city for entrepreneurs, a city for female entrepreneurs, what would you say? Hmm. What will I say? Uh, we do have amazing competence here in Vekro. We have uh, great people that are really, really good at their stuff, but no one hears them. Mm. And it uh, doesn't matter how many, I've been in so many groups and networks and everything, but when we come to that point that we need to take risks and work together, then you can just, uh, you can just hear the silence. There's mm. too much. There's too much fear, and and startups. No, I don't believe this is the place for startups. Actually, and I do see that startups. They they may be. Uh, they may be born here, but they are moving to somewhere where they can be heard. Mm. I believe in Vekko, and we are we are. The city is growing, physically, but mentally, no. Hmm. We are not there yet. We need what to. What do you think we? What do we require to be there? We need more risk takers. We hmm. need more disruptive leaders. We need yeah. we need more people that um that speak that that can that that really really speak and uh, don't care what the status quo is. We need hmm. more loud loud mouths yeah. in the right in the right way, of course. Hmm. We need to work together more, but I see too much fear, sadly. Yeah, so people like to remain in their comfort zone, and yeah, they need more more uh, people. It's would awfully cozy the... there. Many people want mm. to be there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. True that. Um, all right. So, um, what networks are there in Vekko for entrepreneurs, or if you want to meet like-minded people who want to work on new stuff, or maybe risk takers, or people? want to take new initiatives are there any networks that you could suggest in Vekko? we had um one network i did believe in is digitri for mm -hmm. uh, for okay. um digitalization and uh, it uh, it businesses don't mm -hmm. know what they're up to right now because i think everything dissolved a little bit during corona uh, but everything is getting back on their feet now. So I think more uh, of these groups will appear. Mm -hmm. So just stay on the lookout mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, mm -hmm. it will come. And also I would suggest for anyone that needs a network like this, start one. Yeah. This is, this is the time to be a leader. This is the time when everyone is expecting someone else to, uh, to start the engine um but be be the leader here if yeah, you need um, someone then then go out call people do something and then it, then more and more will appear yeah and this is exactly the kind of thing that we at startup grind are trying to do trying to build a network where like-minded people can come and others can learn from their journey and this is uh this is a step in that direction so all of you in the audience uh Keep an eye on this this network, and uh, we have some uh, amazing stuff coming on as well in the future as well. Um, well, then we have another question for you, either more risk takers in entrepreneurship or in government and public sector. What kind of where would you like? To wow, see I would them? love risk takers in the government. Wow, we need yeah. those. <laughs> That's the dream. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I didn't even think about it because it's so it, it sounds so uh, alien to me. <laughs> because whenever any good idea appears and when where it stops, it's where the government is. <laughs> yes. So uh, yes, we we would absolutely need more risk takers there. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think they will come, and absolutely entre entrepreneurs. Uh, they are risk takers already because you need you need to be brave to be an entrepreneur yeah and uh, so just do what you do and believe in it because don't um time will tear us down you know when 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 you believe in something you are so motivated and then uh, it takes a bit of time and then you lose it you don't you you start to you start to question yourself and question mm -hmm. everything but that's when we really need to push 
you know, it's easy to get the momentum, but to keep it going is, is something that requires effort. But oh, yes. I... I really love the fact that uh, Sweden has such young uh, politicians. Uh, the other day we were, we were speaking to the uh, deputy mayor of Vekra, uh, who started his political journey when he was 18, he was uh, elected for the local council. So I think the younger you are, the more risk-taking abilities or skills you have as you go as you grow older, you you try you tend to be more on the safe zone. Would you agree? I would agree, yes, I would agree, yes. Uh, also, you could argue that someone very young doesn't doesn't really see the risks or doesn't have any uh, life experience. But that's we we need the minds of those who haven't been around for a long time, yeah. because they they have um, they have the the capacity of seeing something that doesn't exist yet. They yeah. are still very imaginative, imaginative while yeah. the older ones they are they do what they've always done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's very good. That's very good. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Um, Linda, I would like to know, do you have a mind hack, a quick way of working on multiple stuff or projects? Because you either yourself have uh, so many different ideas and you're working on multiple things. So you'd be the perfect person to answer this question. What do you do? How do you manage yeah. so many different things? Wow, I have lots of mind hacks. One of them, if working on different projects or different businesses, I, I block out time. Uh, my calendar uh, is like any other calendar where uh, where I put my where I put my meetings and everything. But I block out times mm -hmm. uh, that I don't know yet what I'm going to work on, but I uh, I block that time for a specific project. So um, I have Tuesdays where I do my uh, where I do the coaching, and then I have Fridays that are for uh, for a project like send the project. Then I have Thursdays where I do my um, personal training clients and everything. Mm -hmm. so block out time. And uh, but the mind hack that has helped me the most is um, when working on something, uh, and this this works every time. Do the absolutely smallest part you you can imagine. The smallest, smallest part. Uh, we often get stuck in um, thinking about what needs to be done, like the 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 whole yeah. the whole task. But what mm -hmm. is this absolutely smallest thing that I can do? It's if it's opening up my computer. Okay, then that's one step. That's one thing. Mm -hmm. And then what's the next smallest part that I can do? That makes me always move forward. Yeah. I always move forward because I always think, what's the smallest, tiniest mm -hmm. thing I can do right now? Mm. How interesting that is. Just take baby steps and just in just the right ba direction. Yeah. Mm. Brilliant. So baby steps are smaller than we think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but they take you where you, where you need to be. Um, let's see if you've missed any questions. Uh, we're running out of time. Either we can talk for hours. There's so much that we can learn from your journey. But uh, I guess we'll have to uh, end this session here. But uh, before you leave, I'd, I'd, I'd like to let you know how uh, happy we are for you to be here, uh, how thankful Thank we are, and for you to take out the time and share all of these things with us. If you could leave us with uh, with some concrete tips do's and don'ts, some advice for the upcoming entrepreneurs, for women, for, for uh, uh, anyone who would like to break the barriers, anyone who would like to take risks, what would be your um, tips for that? Yeah, um, the first one is for, for laser sharp focus, just yeah. baby steps. Don't, like, don't let any decision take more than five seconds. Five seconds tops then you get moving move just move uh, mm -hmm. get uh, get out of the um, the chair or whatever mm -hmm. you're sitting on just just stand up and then the motion is set it's all about setting motion uh, motivation is a myth don't ever ever believe in motivation it's like the tooth fairy there is no mm -hmm. motivation you, wow. there's only mind strength you need to you need to push yourself 
uh, and motivation will always leave you as soon as you're when you're the happiest and everything is going well the day after the motivation will be gone so you need to be prepared um yeah um what else write write a lot just write because when you challenge your thoughts by writing them down you will see what actually works and what doesn't yeah just write tear it tear it apart and then throw it away you don't have to keep a journal or anything just write down what you're thinking just the act of writing gives you so much clarity yes it all comes back to action you need to do something you need to stand up and then you're on the move you need to write it down Mm -hmm. then you have started something Uh, action Mm -hmm. is what starts Mm -hmm. everything yeah, rather than waiting for motivation, just do, just go on, start the set everything in motion, and then the motivation comes on later. Yeah, uh, you need to, the action starts the motivation, not the other way around. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Thank you so much once again, either. Thank you so much. Thank you very you, much. Uh, lovely people who have joined us today, and have a wonderful, wonderful evening, a great rest of the summer, and take care of yourselves. Goodbye.